working at the council is indeed quite special because it is an EU institution, um, but really it is the place where European politics um, is shaped every day. It's the place where the action is. It's the place where EU leaders meet, where world leaders come to visit all the time. Um, we have a lot of uh, press and media attention and a lot of journalists in this building. Um, so I think also for trainees, it's a really great experience to uh, see how Europe works at the highest political level. One of the main things that I really liked about the traineeship was the fact that we were we were not that many trainees compared to the other institutions. In the other institutions there are hundreds of trainees but here at the council we were only 60 or so so we really became like a tight-knit group. We kind of like made a, a little family for ourselves here and then really got to know each other and you know build this network and I think that was one of the main takeouts and also what Alexandra said about being at the heart of, of European politics was also one of the amazing things. All European EU citizens can apply who have at least a bachelor degree. The main aim of our traineeship is just that both trainees and our institution benefit from it, so trainees get a meaningful work and they get a deeper understanding of the work of the Council and the EU, and the Council benefits from the fresh input from the trainees. There is no age limit, although I have to say that most of our trainees are young graduates. Mm -hmm. But we, are, we also welcome uh, other people who are uh, changing their careers or they are pursuing uh, lifelong learning. So they are also very welcome to apply as well. The eligibility criteria is that you need to f have finished your first cycle of studies. That means three years of university studies, which results in a bachelor degree. And you should have earned a bachelor degree before applying, but it's okay if you don't have the degree in your hand until you sign the traineeship agreement. We also have another traineeship program, uh, which we call compulsory traineeship as part of your studies. The conditions uh, are different. The main difference is that you don't need to have a degree in order to apply, but all the conditions and the criteria is explained on our website. You can apply and you can get in as a trainee, even with solely the knowledge of English. But then we also, ha I had a lot of friends uh, in the traineeship group who were mainly speaking French during their work hours and during their time as a trainee. So it really depends and a lot of people knew both languages. So it's really a mixture of like English speakers, mainly French speakers, and then, you know, both. And it's very common that people have several languages that they speak. The more languages you speak, the more versatile you are. So um, you don't have to have French, for example, but it's very useful if you do, because you can just do more stuff, you can work on more assignments. Um, whenever we would be looking at candidates for traineeships, we would really also look at their at the languages that they had. And indeed, I mean, we asked Yona to come and work with us. So for us, French is not an absolute requirement, but um, it is really good if you have it, because in the council, a lot of French is still spoken, I feel. But um, let's say that you don't have French, but you have another super useful language, maybe Greek or maybe uh, Finnish or another language. That can also be a real asset. We received lots of applications from um, well, candidates with a background in EU policy, law, international relations. But we also need uh, trainees in information and technology, logistics, meetings, all these kind of fields which are needed to, to run the council. During the application you have to select your first preference and second preference and there is a quite a long list of preferences, domains available and these domains mirror the activity of the Council. Activity in the policy field, but also in the administration, communication, translation. Uh, professional experience is not, um, not required, so you can also apply without any professional experience if you have the bachelor degree. And it's what you indicate as your domain, uh, first domain and second domain, is really up to you, up to your interest, up to your motivation. So it can perfectly happen that your studies are different what you are interested in now but of course your applications should be consistent so you should have a, a deep knowledge of the of the domain what you are choosing for i would really look at motivation and try to see okay have these people done their research have they you know checked our website do they know roughly what we're doing and is their motivation quite strong i mean if it's just a generic motivation saying oh this looks interesting to me 
that's maybe not so convincing. But if people have clear points, even though they might lack um, the experience in the field, I can still be, be, be persuaded to pick somebody mm -hmm. just because, you know, it's, it's not really fair to ask of a ton of experience from people who are just starting their career. So I, I totally get that. But find that thing that makes you unique. Find that thing in your studies or your life in general, in your work experience that makes you stand out and highlight that because then there are a lot of applicants. Make yourself, you know, special. We need a lot of extra hands on deck. We need a lot of help uh, watching social media, tracking, you know, seeing what, what journalists are saying about us, um, trying to sort of anticipate the news cycle. And trainees have played a, a super valuable role in this regard because they've really been our eyes and ears and they help us to keep track of the huge volume of communication that's happening about the summit. And then we're able to, based on all of the work they do, we're able to in, in yeah, inform our political principles much better. So that's also something that I think trainees need to realize is that um, our aim is not just to have you, you know, there in the office and just look on from the sidelines, but really you're going to be doing a, a real job. They are tough days. You you work hard. You work lo long hours, but it's all also very very rewarding because you you get to be really close to what is what is happening that day, what is decided that day, what is talked about that day, monitoring the media, monitoring Twitter, social media. And th yes, it's true, you get to get quite close to the leaders. I would usually come in at nine o'clock, uh, depending on the day. Sometimes if there's a summit or a preparations for a summit, then you, then you come in earlier. But it's usually an eight-hour eight workday, but at the press secretariat that also varies a lot because, as I said, if there's summits, if there's something very important, days might drag on and that's, that's normal. It really depends. Some days were a little bit slower, then I had more time to do research and to teach myself new things. And then other days it was really full-on press conferences running from A to B to C to D. And yeah, but really, as Alexander also mentioned earlier, it is, it is full-on work. A lot of it comes down to your the accommodation that you're going to get in Brussels. There, there's a number of options. So some places are expensive and some places are less expensive where you're going to where you're going to live here. But that that is going to take some chunk of the money. But there is going to be money left. And and I I think I lived in a in in a, in a nice manner with the with the 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 money that I received from the council. I I had some savings before I came here, and I only dipped into them just a little bit. <laughs> like it is, it is sufficient enough amount of money to have a social life, to go to the cinema, to have a drink, go to a concert, and yeah, you you can really live a rich social life as well with the money that you receive from the council. Usually we select 50 trainees, so applications and closes uh, 16th of October and then we start right away with the selection procedure. So the selection will be ongoing in November, December and our aim is to uh, contact the selected trainees before end of the year. I mean that's the aim. Sometimes happens that we are not uh, able to do that and we are still in January and we are still uh, contacting potential, uh, potential trainees in January. But the aim is that to finish the selection and have the selected trainees by the end of the year. If you are selected or if you are on a shortlist and uh, invited for a phone interview or an online interview, then we send you an email. And if you are selected, you receive a traineeship offer. And the tr those, trainee those candidates who are not, uh, well, who were not selected, they will receive an email at the end of the selection procedure. During uh, the years, you see trainees who have been, at, I mean, they are coming back in another uh, professional capacity. They become delegates, work for permanent representations in Brussels, they work for NGOs, think tanks, or they come back as, as uh, working for the council. Quite a good number of trainees stay on in Brussels and find, uh, find a job after the traineeship here. We recently had a new colleague join us in the web team and um, I had met him the first time when he was on his tail end of his traineeship and I had just started in the press office. It's really fun to see people come back because it, I think it's a sign that this, the time they spent here was a good time, was a useful time. So. I think the main thing is that you need to be proactive and you need to be open and you need to be, you really need to show 
the people you work with that you're willing to learn new things and that you yourself have your own ideas that and you want to contribute to the working environment not just like I'm here to follow orders obviously you need to know how to do that as well but <laughs> but really to push push forward the fact that you are willing to contribute something to the working environment so be proactive that would be my main tip mm. A good trainee is definitely somebody who is ready to work and to work hard, um, but who is also honest and open when things don't really go as planned, when they struggle with something or when they cannot meet the deadline or they need some extra help. Because honestly, although we're trying to give you an authentic work experience, um, we also want you to learn. We want you to be able to grow and benefit from this experience. I would just say that apply and come here because it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. It's really you learn a lot and you improve as an as an employee. And something that I have noticed uh, applying for jobs after afterwards, there's a lot more callbacks exactly. after you've done the traineeship. So it really it really pays off to as you said in the beginning, leave your life and and move to Brussels. So it's <laughs> I, I do not regret that at all.